Hello everybody, welcome to episode 21 of the video series in which we program an entire video game from scratch in the C programming language using almost no libraries and no gaming engines. We're not using DirectX, we're not using OpenGL, we're not using Unity, we're not using SDL, none of that. None of it. Um, I apologize in advance if I feel or if I come across as a little bit lethargic today, I just got done uh, mowing my lawn in the 100 degree heat and almost killed myself in the process. But I am dedicated to you guys, so I'm going to film this video anyway. Um, let's see. Oh, first things first, um, as usual, uh, let's look at the comments uh, from last time. Alright, so first comment, he says, to fix the switch case indentation, take a look at this Stack Overflow answer. It's an older comment, but it looks like the same menu path works in VS 2019. It's an older code sub, but it checks out. Okay, so if you've been watching the stream, I've mentioned it twice now, and I'll... Um, I hate, I've always hated the way that Visual Studio does this. Um, right there, it uh, automatically indented my, my case, which is really annoying. And it did it again right there. So that's like, I had to correct it like twice. And it's just a yeah it's just a big old mess so let's let's take a look at the stack overflow answer he this guy is having the same problem he says goes to tool options as a text editor basically go here uh, in Visual Studio all right tools options text editor C and C++ uh, formatting. There we go. There's custom run clang format for all formatting scenarios. Indentation. Hold on. Let me go look in here again. Indentation. Formatting. Indentation. Formatting, indentation. Okay, good. Now, is there something in here about case, indent case contents? Okay. It's already checked. Okay, indent case labels. Boom. Indent braces following a case statement. No. I do not want that. But I do want this. And I do want that. Okay. All right, let's try again. Oops. Accidentally hit the Windows key. Okay, it's perfect. Thank you very much. That is exactly what I've been. Uh, looking for that's actually been bothering me for years, and I'm never. Uh, uh, that's the first time I've actually uh, fixed it. So thank you very much for that comment. Uh, that's very helpful. Okay, next comment says, "Why not use assert.h and the associated assert macro from the C standard library?" Um, okay, great point, and I should have mentioned this last time. Um, obviously, I know we talked a little bit about um, asserting last time, which is essentially um, intentionally crashing when we are doing sort of a sanity check, uh, basically when something has happened that should never have happened, uh, we are going to intentionally crash uh, so that we can debug it rather than get ourselves into a, an unpredictable state. Um, so um, I totally failed to mention, however, though, uh, that the C standard library already comes with one, or uh, you could you can include 
assert.h. And assert.h already has one defined. And it's, um, let's see. I think it is assert. Now you can see that um, you can see over here that it's just a pound defined, just like we were doing, um, and it basically it basically does the same thing. Only it um, captures like the source code file that 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 uh, we were at that we crashed at and the line number, which is very handy. Um, we could use that. And there's no reason why you couldn't, I mean, there's no reason why you, uh, there's nothing wrong with the, the built-in assert. Um, the only reason that I wanted to make one ourselves is I essentially wanted to um, customize it. And I was thinking, you know, we may want to add our own custom logging to our assert message, like our, our assert macro, we may want to add our own custom logging to it. We may want to add like a text message box to it, um, something along those lines. Uh, let me open up this file. We could at least um, add a add a message to it. And then we could say, I, I mean, and, and you could do something with the message, like you could display the message uh, in a message box or something. But um, let's go to, oh, you know what? In fact, let me go ahead and take care of this too. Um, and just like we talked about last time, this is simply um, if we are building in debug mode, uh, go ahead and crash. Uh, but when we when we build the release mode of this game, um, we're just going to turn the assert macro into a no op, into a nothing, so that the um, asserts will have no effect. Um, because the theory is supposed to be that once we have um, once, by the time we have finished this game, we've hopefully debugged it to where it doesn't crash. And we won't need the asserts. We won't, have, we won't ever hit the asserts. Um, of course, that's the theory. Uh, rarely does it, you know, work out that way where you release a completely 100% bug-free game. But that won't stop us from trying. Okay. Um. By the way, this is the first episode that I have actually added a couple of lines uh, of code off camera. Um, I just did a couple of things that I thought you would probably find boring. So, like for instance, I added this game version uh, string there, and I just made up 0 0.9 uh, 0.9a as the version uh, arbitrarily because it's sort of like pre-release, right? Um, what else did I do? I also changed uh, this enum, the log level enum, and notice how I used uh, these uh, names, ll for log level, underscore none, ll error, ll warning, ll info. And I did that because I started to realize um, I should make these enum members uppercase. I was like, it feels doesn't feel right to not have these be uppercase. and just to show you, uh, yeah, see, I did a, I kept notes of all the things that I did just so that I could at least explain them to you uh, on camera. But if I go to, uh, what is the history for naming constants in all uppercase? And so if you read this, uh, this person has the same question um, where he's talking about should we capitalize uh, constants? And then this uh, this this um, person goes on to say that yes, you should. And since enum members uh, enum values are are effectively constants as well, uh, you should capitalize those two. So um, it's 
purely a matter of style. Uh, it doesn't matter if you don't want to do it that way. You don't have to. Um, but I feel like, I just feel like that that enum values should be capitalized. So that's why I moved, I converted these to uppercase. Uh, they used to be lowercase or title case. Uh, we moved them to uppercase. Um, the other thing I did is I went through here and I realized that I cannot use I cannot use the the value of just ca all ca of all of ca uh, error in all caps. Sorry, that was hard for me to say. Uh, I can't use the the just the word error in all caps because it's already been defined. And if I want to find out where it's been defined in, it's been defined in WinGDI.h, and I. I need WinGDI.h. I'm not going to mess with WinGDI.h, so I renamed my variable to ll underscore error instead. Uh, so that'll ex that explains that. Um, all right, so I've explained that. I can delete it. Um, also, obviously, I changed uh, log message a to now it takes a log level instead of a D word. Um, and then I showed you why I couldn't just use capital error. Um, if you look at the function declaration uh, for log message A, uh, it takes in a, a log level now instead of a D word. You know, not a big deal, but there it is. Um, I also added uh, some logging at the end of load 32 bit per pixel bitmap from file, and I'll show you what it looks like. Um, basically, Oh yeah, this is all it is. Is basically if the function succeeded, then I'm going to log an info message that says that it's successful, and if otherwise, I'm going to log an error level message that says it was not successful. And the um, the benefit here is that it will actually print out the the file name that I was trying to load, uh, so that'll help us uh, debug in case we mistyped a file name somewhere or mistyped a path uh, name. So that's all that is. Um, all right, what else? I explained that. Initialize hero. I think I already did that. And, um, you know, let me know if you would prefer that I don't do any of these things off camera. Uh, I got kind of carried away um, a couple nights ago. Uh, this one, we don't really... I don't know that we we don't really have to add logging to because this function is already going to log to file. So we may revisit that later. All right, what else? We talked about assert. In fact, I probably need to go fix uh, some our our assert actually because I just added a message thing to it. Right? Assert. And it's simply just a helpful little note uh, to ourselves um, about why we're crashing. And we're not we're not logging this message to file or anything yet. It's just a note, a leaving a note for ourselves. Um, unrecognized log level. And that's all of them. So that should be fine. Uh, let's rebuild. All right, let's look at the comments. Uh, okay, so that, the last, he says, why not use assert.h? We talked about that. Um, the next commenter says, when will the episode about sound be? Uh, it's coming up really close. Um, 
I don't know, two or three episodes. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. And then the last commenter says, instead of wrestling with Visual Studio's built-in formatting, why don't you use Clang Format or some other auto formatter? Uh, well, two things. Number one is uh, I just uh, I, I just squashed like the only complaint that I had left about Visual Studio's formatting. So like now it's like I don't have any other. There's nothing else for me to wrestle with because uh, that that was pretty much the only complaint that I had had about Visual Studio's formatting. Uh, secondly, when we went in here, it looks like. We're already using Clang format thing. Uh, uh, what it talks about, where did I see that? Yeah, see, look, it's okay. Apply code formatting rules from a dot Clang format or underscore Clang format file. Okay, so apparently Visual Studio already supports Clang format, so I don't know. I, I've never I've never like dug into Clang format before, but I guess I could just generate one of those configuration files, um, and it would format my text for me. Uh, but like I said, it's a moot point right now because as of right now, I'm not wrestling with Visual Studio uh, right now. That could change at any moment. Um, this reminds me of one other thing. Um, so something else that I did, uh, this is the only other thing I did, um, off camera was that when I, I went through these settings and I realized that code analysis on build, I wanted that to be turned on and it was turned off, uh, because I actually do want the, uh, static code analysis to run, uh, every time that we build, because it's just, in my opinion, it's just another, uh, layer of the enable all warnings um, that we already have. It's just like I want to make sure that this is the cleanest possible code that we can write and that the compiler has like no complaints whatsoever about our code um, rel you know within reason. So anyway when I turned that on this was the only thing that was generated. It said inconsistent annotation for WinMain. This instance has no annotations see this file winbase.h line 933 so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go to that directory oh that didn't work at all alright I'm going to open notepad I'm going to paste that and then I'm going to copy this. Okay, now let's try again. Go to winbase.h, winbase.h, open this guy, and it was line 933. All right, so what it's complaining about was that in this declaration of WinMain right here, it uses source annotation language, sal, in, in opt, in, in, in. And uh, in our source code, we are not using it. That was the only thing. So I'll just make my definition match declaration. Okay, finally made that one go away. Okay, so I believe that does it uh, for the comments and for explaining, kind of doing a recap of some of the stuff that I did uh, while you weren't watching. So that brings us up to speed. So let's let's do something new. Um, let's tackle 
uh, this guy right here, game in, game pad input. And okay, so I'm going to be using uh, this this guy right here. This is a dusty Xbox 360 controller, and you can see that it um, uses USB. So I'm going to plug this. Uh, Xbox 360 controller into my PC, into my Windows 10 PC. Okay, it's powered on. And I just dropped it. So, I think this is going to be fairly simple. Um, we're going to be using X input, so X input, you can look it up and it's fully documented and uh, the X, X input um, API is pretty awesome in my opinion. And um, the reason I say that is just because it's very, it's very simple, very straightforward. Um, it, it's yeah it's very simple to use so this shouldn't take long uh, all we need to do is we need to include x input dot h let's see if that compiles if that header file compiles cleanly and it does. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is when the game first starts up, we need to basically find the first um, connected gamepad. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start by making a global and let's see, I don't remember what Don't remember what the data type for it was. We need to make an X input, X input state. And by the way, um, X input, I'm pretty sure, is only for Xbox controllers. I'm pretty sure that it works. It works fine with both um, Xbox 360 controllers and. Uh, Xbox One controllers. I have an Xbox One controller. Um, you know, it's got like the Bluetooth thing. I can also plug into my PC. I've never tested it. Um, we'll test that one uh, next. But for now, we're just going to start with the Xbox 360 controller. Um, it does not work, however, with, I don't think it works with any other type of controller. So you can't just plug any old random joystick um, and expect X input to work. Uh, with it. I think it is pretty much only compatible with Xbox controllers. So at least at least I think that's true. I don't know. I don't have any other joysticks to test with so it's kind of a moot point. Um, and then finally we need some sort of, I guess to make it a int 8 int 8t uh, gamepad ID and we're going to initialize this to negative one. And the reason we are initializing gamepad ID to negative one is because uh, zero is actually the first controller. As you know, uh, globals are always initialized to zero. So by initializing this to negative one, we know that no gamepads have been found at this point. We're not, we haven't found any gamepads yet. And that's why it's at negative one. If it's at zero, that actually means there is one um, controller connected. So you could, I think, hypothetically have probably four uh, uh, gamepads connected. So you could have gamepad zero, gamepad one, gamepad two, gamepad three. Uh, so, yeah. So the next question is, if we, we could put our, we could put, we could slap some code in here to find the first connected gamepad um, right here at the beginning before we start our main game loop 
Uh, we could do that. <clears throat> we could do that. Um, but the problem with that is, what if the what if the user disconnects the gamepad halfway during the game? Like, what if imagine what if somebody was um, walking through the room and they like tripped over the cord and pulled the cord out, and you know, it, and then they had to go and plug the uh, the gamepad back in. Well, we need some code that runs on a regular basis that allows us to, um, to to compensate for that. Basically allows the user the ability to unplug and plug the controller back in uh, at will. So what I think I'll do instead of putting this code to detect the gamepad, instead of putting it before our main game loop, I think I'm going to actually put it inside of our main game loop. Uh, and I'm probably going to put it Obviously, we don't want to run this code every single frame, uh, but what if we run it every right in here, where we calculate all of our uh, averages and performance statistics and stuff, and we do this every 120 frames. So that's every once every two seconds. So I don't think that is excessive. So I will go ahead and I will go ahead and put it right here. So I think what this effectively means is that the gamepad is only going to start working once the game if after the game has been running for two seconds. If it's really important, if we really need to compensate for that, we could we could go ahead and put you know the same code. We could duplicate the code once before the main game loop starts, and then here we can run it again and again. So why don't I just go ahead and make it, let's go ahead and make a new function. I'm going to call it uh, find first connected gamepad. I'm going to call it find first connected gamepad. And the idea is that um, since we're making a single player RPG, you know, kind of like, you know, think of like Dragon Warrior or Final Fantasy, something like this. As soon as it's a single player RPG adventure, story driven kind of thing. So we don't have to really worry about multiplayer. We really just need to find any, the first controller, right? So that's why I'm doing it like this. Um, we don't have to worry about having, you know, multiple controllers and player one and player two. Uh, I think it's just going to be a single player game, so. Put in the function definition here. Okay. Now every time every time this function is entered, I'm going to go ahead and reset uh, the gamepad ID to negative one. Then we're going to do a little for loop action here. Uh, we're going to cycle through starting with zero and yeah see x user max count is a pound defined in x input dot h uh, so it looks like the max player count is four the maximum amount of controllers you can have on the system is four um, so we're going to so we're going this is going to be a for loop that has multiple conditions here IntelliSense does not want to help me with that variable name. Okay, uh, so we're going to do x input state.
<clears throat> um, let's see. Now the only function that we're actually going to need from this API is x input get state. Gamepad index. And we are going to store that in our state variable. And if that function succeeded, in other words, if it returns error success, that means we found us a gamepad. And that means we're going to assign it to our global gamepad ID variable. And that's it. That is it. So now we go back up to WinMain. And we're going to find our main game loop. And we are going to find first connected gamepad. Let's see if that runs. There were build errors. Oh, we have to link something. We forgot to link a library, unresolved external symbol. Um, yeah, I I only did I only uh, included x input dot h. But I did not actually link to the library, and I'm assuming that it's just x input dot lib. And you know, as when it comes to like ordering these things, do I really want to put it? I, I guess I want to group all of these, all of my little um, pound pragma comments uh, together instead of you know having it right next to I don't know what if it makes more sense to put it right next to the uh, pound include or to put it down here because it's right next to the other one I don't know it's kinda one of those things that may change depending on my mood um, All right, so now we, let's see if that runs. Yeah, it runs fine. Oh, the other thing I did while you weren't looking is that I uh, reformatted, I sort of cleaned up the format of this debug text over here, uh, just so that everything is nice and aligned, looks a little nicer now, and um, that's all. Uh, but yeah, that works fine. So let's go to process player input. Our process player input function. And I think right here, see if you notice right here we do get async key state for uh, this um, gives us the state of all these keyboard keys. Uh, we basically just want to continue adding onto that if game G gamepad ID is greater than greater than or equal to zero. I don't know why I typed it backwards. Right. So if it's basically if it's not negative one, then uh, we know that we have a gamepad connected. Or we could just do greater than negative one, couldn't we? It doesn't matter, it's just, you know, preference. Anyway, so what we need to do is if x input get state of our index, which is gamepad, g gamepad id, and we're going to store that in our g gamepad state, and, you know, I don't know 
um, for certain that these need to be global variables right now because I don't know if I'll ever need to access the game state from another function besides process player input. Um, but for now, I'll just leave them as globals. We may change them later. Anyway, so if, as before, if x input get state uh, is successful, then we need to uh, basically, for all of these things, escape key. So what do we want the escape key to be equivalent to on our controller? So if I look at the controller, what is the escape key? Is it this back? There's like a little back button over here, which I think is it. All right, so we'll do we'll do escape key is down, and we're going to do a bitwise uh, or gamepad state dot gamepad state dot. You're not helping me in sense. You're not helping me. Gamepad dot. Why is it not helping me? X input state. X input state. It's a it's a structure. It's a structure. All right, let's find x input get state. Yes, yes, x input state. See, it has a member called gamepad. It has a member called gamepad. Gamepad. X input gamepad, X input state, and the X input gamepad structure has a member called W buttons, and that's what I want is W buttons. Now magically the error goes away. It's like oh. IntelliSense didn't want to help me, but once I typed it all myself, it's like oh. Oh yeah, that's perfectly fine. Anyway, uh, x input uh, gamepad back. Okay, so essentially what I'm doing here is I'm saying that I'm I'm basically expanding um, our definition of what the escape key is. The escape key can be the virtual key code for the escape key on the keyboard, but if you have a controller plugged in, uh, escape key can also be, uh, I'm basically adding the value of the uh, the back button on the Xbox controller. And we're going to do that for all of our keys, um, except for the debug key. I don't think I'm going to have a debug key on the controller, so I'm going to skip that one. I'm going to go to uh, left key. So left key is down, G, gamepad, state dot what gamepad dot I don't know why I don't know what's wrong with IntelliSense basically when this happens you have to go in and like delete uh, the IntelliSense database um, it's just a pain in the butt X input gamepad left dpad Okay, right key is down, gamepad state dot gamepad dot w buttons, x input, gamepad, dpad, right. Um, up and down, up key is down.
down key is down. Gamepad state. And if somebody can tell me if there is a reason why IntelliSense, IntelliSense doesn't want to help me right here on these on this uh, structure. If I'm doing something wrong, please let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to say IntelliSense is kind of garbage right now. D-pad down. Left, right, up, down. All right, do we have any other keys? Um, no, the only keys we have right now are uh, left, right, up, and down. Needless to say, when we start implementing other buttons uh, like start and um, you know A B X Y all this kind of stuff, uh, we are going to we're going to expand it right here, and I don't know why I do this because um, I know that every time I copy and paste it, it's just going to get undone. But something about vertically aligning my equal signs uh, makes me happy, so I'm going to leave it like that. All right, now I'm going to run it. I'm going to run the game. And everything still works with the keyboard. I can use WSAD. I can use the arrow keys. If I pick up my controller, I now have control pad. It's working. It's working great. And now, if I unplug this, I've unplugged it. I can no longer uh, control my character with the cane pad. Keyboard still works, however. So that's good. Keyboard still works. Now I'm going to plug the controller back in. And now keyboard, I'm sorry, now gamepad works again. Gamepad works. So simple as that, we have, we have uh, not only do we have gamepad input, but we have robust gamepad input that can survive uh, having the cord yanked out and plugged back in. So that was easy. That was that was too easy. All right, so I think I have about 15 minutes left. So I could probably get started on something new. Uh, we won't make it very far. But I think the next thing I would want to work on, and I can go ahead and cross gamepad input off the list, um, but I think the next thing I want to work on is probably probably menus. And the reason why I'm doing menus in front of sound is because I think that there's a natural place for sound to come in as soon as we have menus. So like I said, this is going to be an RPG, so menus are going to be everywhere in this game. Um, you're going to have things that you need to select and dialogue boxes that are going to have yes no options on them, you know, like you know, the king will say, "Do you want to save the princess?" and you have to select yes or no, right? So you have to hit your little gamepad arrows to select things and hit A or Y or whatever um, to confirm your choice. So, and starting at the very beginning of the game, we're going to have a title screen that's like, you know, start a new game, or do you want to load a saved game, or uh, do you want to look at the options menu and change, like, the music volume and things like this. So, I think menus are going to have to come first, uh, before sound. And the first thing we're going to do in creating menus is we're going to define some new data structures. So essentially a menu consists of two things. Uh, a menu consists of, well, a menu consists of menu items, right? So we need uh, to first to, we need to define a, what, a, what is a menu item. So we're going to make a new structure and we're going to call it menu item. And each menu item is going to have a name. It's going to have 
it's going to have x y and x y coordinates for like where is it on the screen and uh, the most most interestingly it's going to have a function pointer um, action This is going to be a pointer to a function. So it's essentially going to be when you click on that menu item or hit enter on the menu item or hit the A button on your gamepad while, while this menu item is selected, we're going to run whatever function this points to. It's a function pointer. Okay, so that does it for a menu item. Next, we're going to create another uh, structure called a menu. So a menu is simply a collection of menu items, right? So um, menu. And again, a menu is going to have a name. And it's going to have a selected, it's going to have basically a, which menu item out of your collection of menu items is currently selected. Uh, it's going to have an item count and then it's going to have a pointer to the collection of items. Um, so let me let me let me hash this out. So let's say this is our screen right here. And let's say that we are drawing, we're drawing the title screen. So up here we're gonna have this really but um, title here. It's gonna be called, you know, game B, whatever it's gonna be called. I don't know, you know, some cool name with like dragon or uh, or or you know knight or something in it. I don't know what a name, but anyway. Uh, the menu will be like right here, right? The, we're going to draw our menu right there, and our menu is going to have, you know, start new game, and it's going to have um, continue save game, I guess. It's going to have uh, options. It's going to have... I guess quit. Okay, and then there'll be like a little cursor over here, like that, right? So that whenever I I can hit up or down and cycle through these these options right here. So this collection of four things right here, uh, this collection is going to be like start new game as a menu item, continue saved game as a menu item, options is a menu item, and exit is a menu item taken all together, all four of them are going to comprise a menu. That's pretty simple, right? So, okay, let's draw this. What we need to do is, now that we have those structures defined, We are actually probably going to, at this point, create a new header file. Because of all, think of all the menus that we are going to have in this game. There could p potentially be hundreds of them. And I don't want to clutter up this relatively tidy uh, space where we have these globals defined. I don't want to uh, dirty up this little space with uh, these hundreds of menu items that we're about to define. So I'm going to create a new header file here, a new item, a new header file, and I'm going to call it um, menus.h. Okay, and now 
menus.h, we need to make sure that it is included after our main.h because our main.h actually contains the, oh, you know what? Disregard that. I'm probably going to take, I'm going to take these data structures that we just made, menu and menu items. I'm going to cut them out of here. I'm going to cut them out and I'm going to put them in menus.h. Um, and I'm going to put, I'm going to include menus.h right there. Menus, menu items, etc. Let's see if it works. Does it compile? It does. Okay, so in menus.h, we are going to make our title screen. And essentially, our title screen is going to consist of a bunch of menu items. Menu item. Uh, I guess we're going to call it MI for menu item, uh, resume game. I'm essentially going to make, here is my, my plan, is I'm going to make, let's see if my ASCII flow is still up here. Okay, I'm going to combine these two, uh, start new game and continue new game. I'm basically going to... Uh, combine those into one so like if no game has been started or essentially if a game has been started I'll turn this into like resume and then this will be maybe load game right down here but if a game has already been started then I'm going to change this to be uh, resume instead of start a new game so you can basically you know pause it by escaping to this menu um, yeah. All right, so we need to define this. Um, and remember, each menu item has a name, which is just a string of characters. Now, where do we want this? We, we have an X and a Y, right? X and a Y. So we want it to be center screen. So what is uh, center screen? It's going to be game res width divided by 2 minus minus um, it's going to be the um, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 this string is 6 characters long and we know it's going to be drawn with the 6 uh, the, the 6 by 7 font so we know that each character is six uh, pixels wide divided by two. So I think I think that's going to put that I think that's going to put it in the center of the screen. Okay, now where is it going to be in terms of y coordinates? I don't know. Um, let's just ran, let's just pick. Uh, 100 pixels down, um, it's pretty much arbitrarily. And then it needs a function pointer, right? Like what will happen when we click uh, the resume menu item? It essentially needs a function pointer. So we're going to have to call this menu item title screen resume 
resume. Let's just do resume. Okay, now naturally we need to we need to define that function. Um, I guess define this. Should I define it in menus.h? Yeah, I suppose I should, shouldn't I? And I think it's just going to be, yeah, it's just going to be a void. Okay, void menu item title screen resume function. Now let's go to our main.c file and add this definition. Everything is right. Yes. Yes, everything compiles. Okay, moving on. Menus.h. Now we're going to make another one called um, Start new. More options. Menu item. Start new game. Start new game. Same formula here. Width divided by two minus. Uh, how long is this thing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen characters. Each character is six pixels wide, and then divide that by two. And then you need a function pointer, menu item, title screen, start new. Void menu item, title screen, start new. Integer conversion resulted in truncation. Oh, we didn't put it in a Y coordinate. That is a lot of strange words for telling me that we did not put in a Y coordinate. <laughs> um, all right, so we know that each thing is, uh, let's just do 120 for now. We'll wait to see how it looks um, before we, uh, start messing with the exact uh, coordinates. So we need a menu item, GMI, options. And again, I just think, I think the options is gonna have, I know it'll have like sound effects volume and music volume, so you'll be able to adjust the volume. Um, I may also put like an adjustable resolution in there just in case like somebody doesn't want this game to take up their entire screen. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, pick seven characters. Seven times six. by 
by 2. We need a y coordinate, and then we need a an item title screen. Just defining that in our main.c file. Uh, what else? There needs to there needs to be an exit, doesn't there? Void menu item title screen exit. Menu item. and Y, title screen exit, function pointer, okay. That's all of that. And I may I may put these in another file too, a separate file, because uh, you're right. You know, like I remember a few episodes ago, um, some commenter left the comment about like why aren't you splitting this up into separate files? And now the project is starting to get to a certain size uh, where I feel like we should start splitting this stuff up into separate files, starting with the menus. Um, all right, so what? else oh yeah so now that we have all the menu items defined uh, let's define um, the menu itself so menu g menu underscore title screen and we're going to call it title screen menu What comes next in a menu? A selected item. I guess zero. Index of zero, right? The first item in the menu. Um, how many items? Count of. I should have made a pointer to these menu items first. Sorry. Let's make a menu item pointer. And call it G menu item uh, title screen items. We want we want the address of GMI resume game. The address of menu item start new game. Address of G menu item. Uh, options, address O, G, new item, exit. There. And essentially, you know, we, it's obviously pretty easy to add and rearrange um, these menu items. Now, I'm back to our menu, our title screen menu. We're going to make this, uh, this needs to be the count of Title screen items. I don't know why it's uh, saying that's an error right now. And then um, 
Yeah, then we just need a point or two, uh, or we just need to supply a collection of menu items. Okay, there it is. Now we have our first menu. Now, um, from here, what we want to do is go back to our uh, render frame graphics function and actually draw this menu onto the screen. And I think now that we have all of the information needed about the menu, it uh, should be pretty easy to draw that onto the screen. However, looks like I am yet again out of time. Uh, so we're going to do that first thing uh, next time. And this really brings into, uh, we're also going to have to discuss uh, game states next time, which is going to be a really important, um, it's going to be really central to, to our game, right? Because we have to basically keep track of what state is the game in, uh, because you're not going to be you're at the title screen all the time. It's going to be like, you know, is the game state at the title screen or is it at the is it on the overworld map or is it in a combat uh, situation or you know those sorts of things so we are definitely gonna have to get into game states um, but here is the the outlet here is the basically the um, the outline of our of our menu system and you know since menus are going to be so important to this game uh, it's important that we discuss them. So let's see, everything still runs. Yeah, of course, everything still runs. Our gamepad still works over here. Very cool. So we did make some progress today. Um, one other thing to discuss before I leave. Uh, here's the GitHub repository. I am, I've decided to um, start sharing uh, the assets because I realize, you know, you can't really compile this uh, project without the assets. And, um, you know, I went ahead and put the license in there. The, the, the source code and the assets are licensed under two separate licenses. Um, but that being said, you know, I realize that anyone who wants to follow along uh, which is the entire point of this project and this video series is to have you guys follow along um, you're gonna need the assets to do so and I know you don't want to draw all these 32-bit um, bitmaps by yourselves so have some assets and uh, let's see I'm gonna have to close this I'm going to make a commit message episode 21 so 21. So yeah, by the time you get around to seeing this video, I will update the repository uh, thusly. So that does it for today. As usual, thank you very much for watching. And if you have any comments, please do not hesitate to leave any comments or questions that you may have on the videos, and I will address them in an upcoming episode. And Obviously, as you see here, um, GitHub repository, don't forget that we have a GitHub repo um, to go along with uh, this video series so that you can, so that you can uh, play along at home. I guess that's it for today, and until next time, uh, have a good 4th of July holiday. Have a good weekend. All right, bye.